My name is Agnes and I'm a postdoc at ITM. Um, I'll present an outline of a manuscript we're planning to submit to, to this special issue in, uh, in Anglia next year, in the end of next year. And uh, this is a list of preliminary people, but preliminary list of people, the order might change somewhat before submitting, submitting this. But we all work with uh, cyanobacteria, different aspects of cyanobacteria. And the manuscript uh, will be about food web consequences of cyanobacterial blooms. And it's good that Isabella has already uh, given you some background about nitrogen fixation and cyanobacteria, so the title might no longer surprise you, even though um, cyanobacteria are usually thought of as a threat to us uh, because they can be toxic and uh, because they are considered bad food for zooplankton and other crustaceans. And uh, they fall, form these smelly surface blooms stop us from swimming and they bring in new nitrogen um, to the system which can aggravate eutrophication. But this new nitrogen, as we have already heard from Isabel, is also um, important for ecosystem productivity and uh, there is more and more uh, evidence suggesting that this nitrogen is utilized in molded food webs. So we might, or we probably need to reconsider the role of cyanobacteria. They are not only bad, they can be good also. Um, they help, uh, they contribute to secondary production during summer, and that means they might even uh, uh, sustain fish production. Um, and this has important management implications. So I'll just quickly go through some of the steps we've already heard a little bit about it here. But um, the, the, the fixed nitrogen from cyanobacteria can leak out in the water as ammonium and nitrate and be taken up by picocyanobacteria or other phytoplankton that can't fix uh, molecular nitrogen, nitrogen gas. And they can, cyanobacteria can also dissolve nitrogen in organic forms so that heterotrophic bacteria that colonize filament can take can take up. And both bacteria and other phytoplankton and the picocyanobacteria can be food for small zooplankton or for protists. Um, and those are in turn uh, food for zooplankton, which are food for fish. But also, we shouldn't forget that some of these cyanobacteria settle down to the sediment and are food for, for the benthic fauna. And they are also important food for, for fish. So I, take the opportunity since I work with in Bentos to highlight their role. Um, and this is this paper that we are planning to write will uh, deal with all these aspects. So the Bentos are play a very important role in biogeochemical cycling. They feed on the settled organic matter, they bury some of it much deeper down in the sediment where breakdown rates are slower. They also stimulate breakdown rates obviously by feeding on it and by stimulating bacterial um, decomposition, uh, bacterial breakdown rates. And they are food for fish, as I said. But still they are often missing from uh, fish production models and biogeochemical models. Um, here is an example on uh, the link between cyanobacteria and benthic fauna. Uh, since cyanobacteria fix um, molecular ni ni dinitrogen gas, they have a very distinct nitrogen isotopic signal. It's much lighter, uh, lower than other phytoplankton, so we expect the benthic fauna to have a lower signal directly after the bloom if they feed on cyanobacteria. And as you can see, these two, uh, the anthropod here and the uh, new species for the Baltic, um, uh, they have a clear decrease directly after the bloom compared to before. And this is data from one station in one year, but if I just combine it here to make it easy for you, for several stations, several species, two years, you can see that the same pattern holds true. They have a clearly depleted delta-15 nitrogen signal after the bloom, and that's a strong indication that cyanobacterial nitrogen is uh, incorporated in benthic fauna. Um, so, back to the outline of the paper. These are the questions we will uh, try to 
will discuss in the paper, the fate of this nitrogen fixed by cyanobacteria in the fruit webs and the contribution of cyanobacterial production to secondary production and from a management perspective, to what extent should cyanobacterial blooms be reduced without only reducing fish production? And the last slide, um, it's the same, same as uh, slide number two. If it was requested, I have it as the last slide. I'll finish off again. Thank you. Okay.